Okay, so let us uh, check the next question, which is uh, evidently a question on divisibility rules. It says, uh, if the seven digit number 94829B6 is divisible by 72, what is the value of 2A plus 3B? Correct, given that A is not equal to B. Concept tested is divisibility rules, right? Now, how do you assess uh, the divisibility of any given number by a composite number? If the composite number is n, you need to break it uh, into a product of two numbers, p and q, such that they are co-primes. Check whether the number in concern is divisible by p and divisible by q. If both are true, then the given number will be divisible by the required composite number. Okay. So in case of 72, 72 can be written as a product of two co-primes as 8 times 9. If the given number is divisible by 8 and it is divisible by 9, only then it will be divisible by 72. Right? Now, let us go ahead by checking either of the divisibility first. So if you decide to go ahead and check the divisibility of the number by 9, what is the divisibility rule? It says that add the sum of digits. What is the sum of digits? 9 plus 4, 13. 13 plus 2, 15. Plus 9, 24. Plus 6 is 30. 30 plus a plus b by 9. Now pause here. Hang on. Now when you reach 30 plus a plus b, you must realize what is the next multiple of 9 after 30? Think it is 36. And is there anything more? Yes, there is 45. Of course, the list is endless, but practically these are the only two possibilities that we can consider. Why? Because a plus b, uh, friends, could at the most attain a value of 18 because they are single digit numbers. So 9 plus 9, maximum value of a plus b would be 18, not more than that. So therefore, only these two cases qualify, a plus b 6 and b, uh, a plus b being 15 would be the two possible cases. Next, let us try and understand what would happen or assess, uh, you know, the divisibility of the number by 8. What is the divisibility rule for 8? Check the last three digits. So 9, B and 6. That must be divisible by 8. So it's evident that it's a three digit number, obviously, and it is 900 something. So how, how can one go about thinking uh, or arriving at the possible values of B? There are many ways, but let us think of one or let us check one. The first number that immediately occurs to us uh, is obviously 800. You know, it's a hundred multiple of eight. You can quickly move on to 896. 12 eights are 96. Or you could divide the number by 100 and check that the remainder is, you know, uh, divide, the, divide 900 by 8. You could check the remainder and then you could proceed. Or you could reach at 896. Now when you reach 896, you realize that you need to add some number to it such that it becomes 900 and some number 6. So it ends with a 6. So what, what, what can you add to this? What is the smallest multiple of 8 that ends with a 0? It's 40, right? 8 fives are 40, correct? So when you add 40 to this, you get 936. So now this is where you have entered into the domain of the set of numbers that are required. Is there any other number possible friends? Yes. So if you add another 40 to 936, you get 976. Can we move beyond 976? No, because you can add 40, but then you will reach a number which is, or you will achieve, or you will attain a number which is greater than 1000. So that's not, uh, not that does not fall under the purview of the numbers that we require. So what are the possible values of B? 3 and 7, 3 or 7. So let's substitute that and quickly check. Is 3 plus 3 possible? Please pay attention to this condition. What does the condition say? A is not equal to B. So 3 and 3 is out. That's not possible. Can A be a single digit? Uh, can A be a double digit number? Two digit number? No. So therefore 12 also is ruled out. So the next possibility is out. What about this? Can A be a negative number? No. Uh, not possible. And therefore the only possibility here is 8 and 7. So what is 2 times 8? 16. 3 times 7 is 21. 16 plus 21 is 37, 37. So what's the answer? 37. Okay. Let me